financial argument. Follow us on YouTube. Really looking forward to this next interview. Uh, he is an author and the publisher of a very popular website, a contrarian investment site, the deviantinvestor.com. And I'm speaking to the man himself, the deviant investor, Gary Christensen. And uh, like I said, he's a, an author of nonfiction as well as fiction books books both relating to the economy and his latest book which is is just coming out and it has come out is Fort Knox Down and uh, Gary Christensen I'm looking forward to picking your brain on this book uh, what you were thinking about and just the research that you did so thanks for joining me today well thank you very much for having me on the, on the show I'll start you off with this, gold delusions and gold reality, and uh, the Fort Knox Bullion Depository officially contains 147.3 million ounces of gold, and uh, I, I got to ask you, is this truth or fiction? Well, that's the real big question, because if you go to the official website, that's the official story. But the problem is, and I'm, I'm saying this is a problem, uh, it's not been audited in 60 years, roughly, since Eisenhower was president. And even that audit um, was a little shaky. It wasn't really independent, and it didn't wasn't complete by any means. And then there have been a number of other supposed audits and um, inspections since then. Uh, but they're really, really... Um, very tenuous, and they're a long ways from credible. Um, if you want an audit of something, you have independent people come in, and if you don't check everything, you at least check a statistical sample that makes sense. And that hasn't been done. And, um, you know, I haven't done the audits. I haven't been there, but um, um, a, a man by the name of Cruz Jansen, I believe, from Bullion Star, has done a number of wonderful research projects on this, and he's put out a lot of information on it. And I referenced um, him in several of my and some of my articles on Fort Knox. His um, information is is very clear. Um, he even you know points out that um, the Treasury Department has lost quote lost quote a number of supposed audits that were nothing more than yep the uh, tape across the door is still there. Mm. Um, you know that's kind of thin for an audit. Well, Gary, uh, let's start here. Tell us a little bit about Fort Knox and why we should care whether or not there's gold there or not. Well, and that's another very good question. If you're, and let me take the devil's advocate point of view for a moment. If you're a central banker and you say, look, Fort Knox has a roughly 147 million ounces of gold at today's prices. That's $200 billion. That's a drop in the bucket compared to the bond market. That's a drop in the bucket compared to the stock market. That's not even very much compared to Apple stock. Hmm. So Fort Knox is, and all the gold that's in that, remember I'm taking the devil's advocate position here. I'm not buying off on this analysis. But if you look at it from that perspective, $200 billion is insignificant. We just want to deal with paper money. We just want to deal with digital money. And there's lots and lots of that floating around in the bond market and the stock market. So all this business about gold is just hype and, and old-fashioned traditional nonsense that we don't need to worry about. Go back to sleep. Mm. And that's the that's kind of the official story. Um you know, if you listen to central bankers, you you know, you have to realize that they're extremely smart people, but they have an agenda to, and they have something to sell, uh, just like Walmart has something to sell. Hmm. And um, what they're selling is gold is no longer important. And I come back with a couple of questions in regard to that response. First of all, if it's no longer important, why are we going to the trouble of, cre of having Fort Knox there? Why are we paying to maintain it? Why do we have a military base there nearby with thousands of people there? And why do we pretend that it's important by doing those things? And the second question I have is, if gold is so unimportant, why is Russia buying a tremendous amount every month? Why is China buying a tremendous amount every month? Why is India buying a lot? Why is it moving from western vaults to eastern vaults? My 
thesis is gold is very important in the modern world, and eventually it will be realized how important gold is, also silver, of course, but it's eventually we realize how important gold is, and hopefully we will get back to a more sane monetary system that's at least somewhat connected to gold. Mm. And if that's the case, then the gold that hopefully is in Fort Knox, but you know nobody wants to verify it, um, is becomes important. Mm. And that's th- that's the thinking that led to the what happens if Fort Knox isn't the way it appears to be and if it's all just one great big show place, mm. but nothing's real. And that's why I wrote the book, was to think about some of those options, to think about some of those possibilities. And in the book, I actually propose a scenario where um, Fort Knox can pass an audit, and it doesn't have but a minor amount of gold in it. Mm. Gary, uh, so what you're pointing out here is that basically they're controlling the market here. They're controlling gold with $200 billion worth of gold valuations. And, I mean, how significant would it be if they were, there was an audit and there, there was no gold there or, or not as much as we thought? And, you know, what would that do? Is that is that similar to, you know, a COMEX default type uh, situation in terms of what could happen with the gold price? Well, and again, that calls for an opinion and a guess. And uh, first of all, I'd have to say I don't really think the price of gold or the market for gold with the Fort Knox gold. I think we're controlling the market for gold with the COMEX and the LBMA in London using the paper contracts, the derivative contracts. I think those are the primary means of of, of managing the price of gold. And I, I think, secondly, that we all know, and by saying we, I mean commercial bankers, central bankers, um, uh, politicians, um, the men on the street all know that the prices of gold are going to go much higher. It's just a question of can it be controlled in a way that's compatible with political and financial interests. Uh, nobody wants to see, when I say nobody, I mean central bankers and politicians don't want to see gold skyrocketing to 50000 an ounce overnight because it points out the problems with the system and it creates panic in the system. And so the, the powers that be, in my opinion, want to see gold rising steadily, slowly, of course, to get to reasonable numbers. I mean, think back. Uh, 40-some years ago, it was $42 an ounce, and now we're at 1250 mm. Gold is going to go up in price because we're devaluing the dollar, we're devaluing the euro, we're devaluing the yen every day to one degree or another. You know, maybe it's the yen's turn this week or this month or this year, and maybe it's the euro's turn next year. But overall, those currencies are devaluing because that's the nature of central banks. And so the value of the price of, of gold in diminished currency units then must rise. So the question is, as getting back to what you were saying, we want to avoid panic if we are managing the system. We would have panic if we had a dollar crash, if we had a loss of confidence in the dollar. We might have a horrible panic if we had a, a yen crash or a loss of confidence in the yen or the euro or the pound. But we might also have a panic if it were announced. Well, folks, sorry, all that gold that was in Fort Knox you know, the 147 million ounces that we've been telling you about for 60 years, it's not there. Oh, there's a little bit left, but mostly it's all gone, and we don't know where it went or when it went. But that might create a panic also. Um, not because it's a whole lot of money. It's $200 billion, and like I said, compared to the stock market and the bond market, that's pretty tiny. But it might cause a panic of perception and a panic in the the uh, significance of the dollar and the value of the dollar, both domestically and worldwide, and that could be a problem. Mm. And so the logical consequence of that is we can't do an audit because it might not be there. We, If we do an audit and it's not there, nothing good can come of that. So the best thing to do is stonewall. And if we do an audit, we're acknowledging that gold's important. And we don't want to do that because we want to keep everybody focused on digital and paper dollars and bonds and stocks. So we don't even want to acknowledge that gold's important. 
So we'll pretend that everything is there, and we'll just extend the story out and and uh, say, oh, there's no problem, there's no need for an audit, it'd be too expensive to do an audit, and we'll just keep pretending that it's all there and we'll never, ever address the subject because we don't want panic. Mm. So I talk about that in the book. I talk about that in the book. What would happen if? What would happen if we thought about it and there wasn't any gold there? What would happen if it was all faked? What would happen if it was real and it was there? Um, and then I try to put that all in the context of a of a a suspense story and, you know, murders and politics and the president and the Department of Treasury and weave it all together into a more or less believable story um, that probably wouldn't be approved of by central bankers. Mm. Well, I, I can't wait to read the book. I, I'm really looking forward to it. Um, you know, you talk about in the book a scenario where the Fort Knox passes the audit and uh, just mm -hmm. you know, talk about what that looks like. If I, I don't know if you want to get into it too much without people actually reading it in the book, but uh, you know, talk about that. What's the what's the significance of that? And is there you know a real possibility of what you're talking about in the book as it potentially passing uh, in reality here? Well, um, again, very much a matter of opinion. And a central banker opinion or the Department of Treasury opinion might not match mine, so we have to take that into context here. Um, it's very much a matter of opinion. But suppose that you wanted to do an audit. Let's just suppose that you were an insider, say, part of the Department of Treasury, and you needed to do an audit for appearance purposes. And you did that. Well, how would you go about doing an audit if you knew that the, the the whole facility was essentially empty. Mm. You'd have to gimmick the audit. Okay, how do you gimmick the audit? Well, you have people go in and you have them sign on the dotted line and certify that what they saw was real. That's one way of doing it. You would, um, you know, fill it with a whole bunch of um, um, bricks colored gold that uh, look like gold and then you wouldn't look at them too carefully and you'd show distant wide angle pictures of them and say, yep, folks, nothing to see here, move on, gobs and gobs and gobs of gold bars. None of this would be very credible, but that would be one way of doing it. Another way would be what I proposed in the book, and that was um, fill it with fake gold. Hmm. And why not? I mean, it's not, you know, you can, we can fake silver coins now, we can fake gold coins now. Um, we can, you know, people have talked about tungsten bars. You have to go to some work to do this, but that's another possibility. Another possibility is, um, you know, buy off the auditors so that they understand that they must certify these things. And um, they say, yep, we counted all those bars and they're all there. And then nobody ever talks about it again. Audits could be fixed. You just have to have collusion. Mm. You just have to have a, a collusion and agreement. You can always fix something. I mean, one of my favorite things was look at the President Kennedy assassination. Um, I, th there's certainly a matter of opinion there, but if anybody who looks into that thing has to see that there are a bunch of really strange unanswered questions, and yet they sold that story to the public through an agreement with a whole bunch of people agreeing that we would look at this evidence and we wouldn't look at that evidence, and then, strangely enough, a lot, a lot of witnesses died. If you could sell a story like the President Kennedy assassination, how difficult would it be to sell a story about a, an audit of Fort Knox? Yeah. Um, that makes perfect sense to me. Not everybody will agree with that. People will think that uh, I'm exaggerating or I'm a little crazy on that point. But to me, it makes perfect sense. Right, right, right. Well, you know, the the worse things get, the the longer lengths politicians and the talking heads need to go, and the more extreme they have to get to uh, cover up the manipulation and the fraud that is already taking place. And it's not that much of a stretch to think that they are lying to us when we see all the evidence of the lies that are going on now. I mean, the unemployment rate going from 5% to 47 on the worst jobs report in six years. That's not uh, truth to the people. And uh, I can definitely see how they are doing this here at Fort Knox. Um, 
Gary, I, I just want to kind of get your closing thoughts here on gold and kind of how it's relating to the economy at the moment. We kind of talked about it in relation to what's going on at Fort Knox. But, uh, you know, your, your overall thoughts here in 2016 with what we are seeing in the economy and, you know, the Fed potentially raising interest rates, uh, $10 trillion of negative interest rate debt circling the global economy, lots of of uncertainty, lots of instability going on. Uh, kind of your closing thoughts here on gold and the economy. Well, um, let's start with that $10 trillion of negative interest rates. If you would have proposed that the global economy and sovereign debt would have $10 trillion of negative interest rate to a thousand economists two years ago, I'd be willing to bet and this is speculation, of course, but I'd be willing to bet that 999 of them would have said, you're absolutely crazy. Mm. It can't happen, and it won't happen. And yet, here we are. If you would look at people and uh, 10 years ago and say, the Federal Reserve ran their balance sheet up to $4.5 trillion by inventing all this money out of thin air in order to bail out bankers and bad paper and so on, so on, so on, and to stimulate the economy... People would have said, you're absolutely crazy, including central bankers and other economists. They would have said 10 years ago, can't happen, never happened, doesn't make any sense. Um, these kinds of things are almost looking normal now. And I say that the reason they're looking normal, back to your point, is that they're working over time to stretch the system to extend and pretend because it's really that crazy a system and it's been stretched to that, that degree. How can we have 200 trillion of unfunded liabilities and almost 20 trillion of debt and not say there's something wrong with this system? And that goes back to the panic point with gold. Got to keep gold from going too high too fast, like happened in 2011 or 1980, or people might realize there really is a problem. So I think that we can expect to see the problems that are in the economy manifesting with more paper, more money printing, and um, more reassurances that everything is good while you look at the grocery store, you look at uh, everything happening around you, and you can realize it isn't really so good after all. Mm. And all of those things are going to push people to say, well, maybe I should protect myself. And one of the best ways to protect yourself is to get out of paper assets and get in real assets, and that means silver, gold, platinum, art, land, things like that. The era of hard assets uh, is upon us. And in that case, you can expect to see prices rising. And remember, that's not prices rising so much as it's value of the currencies devaluing and going lower and lower and lower. And the more we print, the more craziness we engage in, and $10 trillion of negative interest rates strikes me as pretty crazy. The crazier it is, the more hard assets, including gold and silver, are going to rise. Mm. Well, uh, those are good words right there. Uh, everyone, this is Gary Christensen of the TheDeviantInvestor.com. Gary, uh, if people want to reach out to you, uh, you know, get this book, where would they go and uh, what would they find? Well, eventually it will be available on my website. That's a couple days away. Right now it's available in Kindle book and paperback book on Amazon. And if people want it, I just say go to Amazon and search on Fort Knox Down, and you'll find it. And then um, um, there you go, available Kindle and paperback. Gary, thanks again for coming on the show with me. You're welcome. Certainly enjoyed it.